Uh, let's uh, actually look at example A a little bit more detail. Um, and this is my first time using this simulation to do this, so let's hope it works out. So um, this is the situation that I'm trying to model here. So uh, I guess simulation is already running. So this is the seesaw, and uh, if I pull this down, I'll, wait, uh, yeah. So if I pull this down a little bit, you see it's a, it can teeter back and forth. I don't know. I was playing with it, and it's not very stable seesaw. Good. Everyone clear? Okay. Uh, let me make a few children um, boxes. That's how I see people. Uh, oops. Um. <sighs> let me make it a random color. Wait. Uh, random color. What is it? It's not that random. All right. Um, uh, let me actually clone a few, of, few more of these people. Wait. I thought, oh, there, clone. All right. Um, oh, wait. I guess when I'm cloning, it pauses the simulation. Good. Um, all right. So um, when they talk about CISO, this is what they are Talking about, let me pause the simulation. And uh, if two children are at both ends of the seesaw, what do you expect to see happen when they jump on the seesaw? Balances, right? OK. Now, imagine that uh, the child on this end is twice as heavy. You don't have to imagine. I can make it. <laughs> Material, all right. Uh, let me make his density uh, twice as much. So his density will be four times. Oh, oh, OK, it doesn't balance anymore. All right. Now, let me ask you this question. Is there anything I can do to do with this system to make them balance? Yeah. What can I do to? Yeah, I can um, put them in different positions, right? Let me put a little. Uh, Fix here so that the seesaw doesn't move as I position my children. Oh, I can't tell which one is heavier. Material. Okay, this is the heavier one. Uh, let me make him rubber. Wait, wait, that doesn't. Yeah. Um, let me make him white. Wait. I don't gray. Okay, I think I'll be able to see gray. Okay, so the gray one is the heavier one. So. Um, all right, so I want to put them in a way that they, the CISO will balance after I uh, remove that fix. Uh, OK, actually, it's right center of mass. All right, um, how do you think I should position? Should I position the lighter child farther away or the heavier child farther away? Yeah, you guys all have an intuition for this, right? Lighter child should be, if the lighter child is maybe at the end of the CISO, Sorry, I need more practice doing this. All right. If the lighter child is at the end of the seesaw, then the heavier child would be uh, about how far away? Half of the way, right? I mean, that's the intuition that almost everyone has. All right, let's see if that works. I'm going to get rid of this fix. And yeah, they kind of balance. Uh, not exactly. All right. Wait. Oh. All right, so I guess he wasn't quite close enough, maybe somewhere here. So let's try that now. Yeah, they balance it here. And you know, that's, your, that's the intuition you have. And I want to use that intuition to define torque. So torque is this quantity that causes rotation. How should I, you know, torque is this quantity that causes rotation, by which I mean angular acceleration. And this is the situation where there's no rotation. And it's not because there's nothing that would cause rotation. You can do, uh, see that with the hypothetical. If I remove my heavy child, then it rotates. Um, what direction would you call that? The rotation is just rotated in. Con so imagine the clock. <laughs> Counterclockwise is um, like one that rotates this way. So, so when I so so what that what that's showing is that 
this child here is trying to cause counterclockwise rotation. And if I get rid of the lighter child, then um, it rotates clockwise. So, so when you look at this system, there are things that are trying to make this thing rotate. As in, the lighter child is trying to cause this to rotate counterclockwise. The heavier child is trying to cause it to rotate clockwise. It's just that in this particular situation, they happen to balance each other. So that the net torque, kind of like a net force, net torque is zero, so they, are, they remain at static equilibrium. So how would you define torque? Um, so you know, the point of me saying that we have covered everything you need to know, I should be able to define torque in terms of other things that we know so that we can actually calculate torque if we want you to. So if I said um, there's some torque due to lighter child that we can calculate here, uh, what quantities should it depend on? So when you say mass, you really mean weight, right? Because the child with more mass also has more weight. What ki kind of physical quantity is weight? Weight is a type of force. Yeah. So we think torque should depend on force. Now, it doesn't depend on only on force. Because here, the force of these two uh, masses are different. I don't know if I can display weight information. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm new to this, so I can't actually display it. Oh, never mind. Um, yeah, well, but you know, you've yeah, you've seen that this guy is. Uh, let's go to information. His mass is four kilograms. Um, his mass is information um, two kilograms. So their weights are different, but somehow they are balancing each other out. So this torque must depend on some other things. Position? position? Yeah. So something related to position. And your intuition says that the kind of position that matters is how far away these two masses are. So I want to say torque depends on force and distance. And if you think about it for a while, especially using this situation, you know, what should your torque look like? I hope this formula makes intuitive sense. If I said that, if I said that um, this, that torque. Uh, by the way, let me introduce some of the symbols that we are going to use so that I don't have to keep writing out torque. So um, the symbol that we are going to use to uh, represent torque most of the time is this letter. How many people have seen this letter before? What, what is it called, Ratana? No. Oh. OK, how many people know what the name of this letter is? R, uh, R, RJ? Tau. Tau, yeah. This is a Greek letter. It's lowercase tau. Uh, uppercase tau actually looks exactly like uppercase T. So I will never use it. Lowercase tau, it looks nothing like my T. It, you know, it has a little tail that bends. It also looks nothing like my lowercase T. It doesn't have the tau. So, Greek lowercase tau is what we use to represent torque for hopefully obvious reasons. And so what we are going to say is the torque is equal to, uh, let me give you a guess at this formula. Say that it's uh, force times distance. And we will define, uh, refine this a little bit later. But this formula seems reasonable that torque is force times distance. Yes? That kind of explains this, right? The, um, yeah, so the force of this heavier child is greater, but, the, um, but because his uh, um, distance is less, he, um, he doesn't, he's not able to push the thing as much as, uh, he's not able to rotate as much, so uh, they balance out. Yeah. Let me do a, a couple more fun things. And um, in fact, uh, let me look at a bit of a mathematical detail. Then you would um, question this a little bit. Um, so let's say I try to write this down as a formula. Say that torque is equal to force 
times distance, so some kind of change in position. Wait, that doesn't quite look right. Because I remember that force is a vector, right? And I also remember uh, displacement is a vector. But if I say that, have you seen this before? Yeah, work. work, right? So the quantity I'm trying to define is actually not work. It's something different from work. In, in fact, um, so you know, let's erase this for now. Uh, how is torque, um, in particular, different from work? What, what property does torque have that work doesn't? Rotation. I mean, yeah, it has something to do with rotation. Babe, but maybe you know, work is what you need to get things to rotate. Uh, we are going to relate to angular acceleration, but I mean torque as a mathematical quantity, Stephen. It should be a vector. It's a vector. Torque has a direction. As in, if I have this wheel, so I can rotate it in ways where its kinetic energy will increase. So I'm doing positive work both time. But when I spin it this way, I'm spinning it counterclockwise, as you guys see it. But if I spin it this way, I'm spinning it clockwise, as you guys see it. And in fact, later on, we'll see that torque is a full vector quantity. It's not just a, in one dimensional one way or the other. It's a three dimensional vector. So when we look at torque, it has to be a vector quantity. So whatever this is, it cannot be, um, it cannot be a dot product. Because it's a dot product, you'll get scalar quantity. We can't have that. So for now, you know, I'll leave this blank. And we'll cover that on Tuesday. But um, this is what I want to describe for now. Because I recognize the force and change in positional vectors, um, that means they can have relative direction between them. Right? So when I look at torque, this, uh, these are the full list of things that torque will depend on. Torque, um, the magnitude of torque, so that I don't have to worry about the direction for now. It's going to depend on the magnitude of the force uh, for now. I'm not going to worry about the <laughs> force as a full vector quantity yet. Magnitude of displacement for now. And the third thing that I'll have it depend on is the angle between these two vectors. Yeah, call that theta. So you know, illustration would be like this. So this is force, this is delta x, then this would be what I'm labeling theta. Okay. And you know, this was also the case with the work. The angle between the two vectors mattered, right? And I have a hunch that with the torque, it might as well. It, it might also. So, um, so you know, I have some parts of this formula that. I can get from my earlier intuitive guess. I can say, all right, um, it should be the magnitude of force, scalar multiplication, with the magnitude of displacement. Let's see I have that far. Now what I want to look at is how it depends on this angle. Because if it was, you know, if it was something like cosine theta, then might as well be work. That was work. And we'll see how it, um, for a torque, even when you just look at the magnitude, it'll be different from work. So let me play with this a little bit. I think that's a, one of the good things about simulation. Once you have some confidence that this is simulating something that's a reasonable approximation of re real world, then we can kind of look at it. Um, let me do it this way. Let me get rid of both my children, because um, children are kind of hard to control. Um, which is true, right? Um, and instead, I'm going to have a thruster. So here's a thruster, and here's a thruster. And um, um, I can actually, so you know, this is some device that is just, uh, all that's doing is it, uh, um, it's applying force uh, wherever it's attached. Let me make sure it's attached right at the tip. Oops, hey, what happened to my thruster? Hmm. I don't think I know how to, Use thrusters well. Okay, I guess it has to stay on it for some reason. Huh. All right. Um, let me make sure. Okay, the end lines up so that they are at the same distance. Uh, okay, I don't know why this one is upside down. Let me make it rotate um, so that it's not upside down anymore. Okay. 
Is that perfectly vertical? OK, I can't tell from here. All right. All right, I have two thrusters. Um, oh, wait, wait, I want to have it pointing downward. If they're pointing upward, they're just going to make the whole thing fly out. Yeah, that's not what I want. I want them to push downward. So you know, these thrusters are sort of simulating what the children would do. Yeah? And if I let the simulation run, uh, nothing interesting happens. Uh, let me uh, make this thruster so that they, let's see, thrusters. Uh, thruster does not follow geometry rotation. So I'm going to have these, uh, use these thrusters to apply force in a particular constant direction. And if I make one thruster um, stronger than the other, you know, twice as uh, strong, then you see that they rotate. Good? All right. So, uh, yeah, let me make them both 10 newtons. And what I'm going to try to find a way to do is, right now they all balance out. It's like having two equal weight child, one of one kilogram, the other one of one kilogram there. And what I'm going to try to do is, well, is there something I can do to these thrusters to uh, make this rotate without changing the magnitude of the force? So without changing the magnitude of the force or the magnitude of displacement. I can try changing the angle of the thrust. Let's give it a try. Let me fix it down so that um, it doesn't move while I'm doing that adjustment. And I guess I will uh, make this angle a little bit like this way, 45 degrees. So one way to look at it would be, so this is the displacement here. Um, so this is my vector delta x. And this is my vector f. And I um, guess it depends on how you label your angle. You could be either labeling this angle here as theta or this angle here as theta. But whichever you know, that's the angle, right? Uh, before, they are both at 90 degrees. Now, one is still at 90 degrees, the other one is not. Which, uh, which direction do you expect a seesaw to uh, rotate in? Clockwise or counterclockwise? I mean, you say clockwise. Yeah. So that's the intuition that you already have. It's an intuition that you have from everyday experience before you knew any formulas. And when I, you know, remove this pivot, you will see that, yeah, your intuition is right. It does rotate clockwise. So what I want to do is I want to uh, guess at a formula that agrees with that intuition. So if I say it's a cosine theta, that's not right. Because cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So when this became no longer 90 degrees, torque should have been greater counterclockwise, but that wasn't. So what other expression here will actually work? Sine theta? Yeah, I mean, that's the other choice, right? It's either that or just multiplied by theta. So, um, so I will say guess, all right, so f times delta x times sine theta. And um, let's see if that's true. So, um, so here's one way I can sort of see if the sine theta is true. So um, let me get rid of my children again. I mean, sorry, rocket, Not, no longer children. Um, so let me make the force kind of much smaller because, wait. Um, uh, let me, material, okay, infinite friction, that's good. Um, so, yeah, we do this right now, even at this angle, when I get rid of this pivot, then it'll make it rotate, right? So if we, we are right about this thing sine theta, at what angle can I put the force relative to the displacement so that it'll apply zero torque? Hmm? Zero degrees, okay. So wait, which way is, is this zero degrees or is this zero degrees? Should they point to the right or left? To the right, really? Everyone thinks, once again, this is my delta x. Um, so for the force f to be at zero degrees, should they point to the right or left? Um, left, okay. Um, well, let's try left first and then maybe we'll try right. So let me rotate this um, to the left, 
So you know, force is pointing in the same direction as delta x. Let's see what happens. It might make it fly. Uh, if it does, I'll change some things. Oh, nothing happens. Or maybe it's not running. Mm. OK, never mind. It is running. Hey, what happened to my rocket? Um, but yeah, it is running. So, um, so yeah, it does make it rotate. It's just that, um, in fact, you can, oh, uh, that's an accidental. You can see it here. When this comes to this position here, when the rocket aligns with the displacement, it doesn't, so it sort of oscillates about this point because here's the equilibrium position where the torque due to rocket is zero. Okay, so what about the, what about the other direction then? Um, what about when, so if uh, it points this way, um, so what angle would you, oops, um, sorry. Well, I have to be careful here. Um, let me start by pushing force all the way down to zero. Uh, let it come to rest. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Um, let me just re let the simulation run super fast. This paid away all the energy, all right. Now I can go back to the regular simulation. Um, okay, so now the force is pointing to the right. Uh, so here it's 180 degrees. Based on this formula, what do you expect the torque to be? Zero. Also zero, yeah. So your intuition wasn't incorrect. And in fact, it'll turn out that um, how you, whether you, mm, yeah, so let me turn back this back to 10 newtons. Ah, sorry, went too far. Okay, I have a little bit of a problem here. Um, it, it's a matter of, oh, wait, I think, okay. Um, let me just put it to five newtons, because uh, it's a matter of um, um, something else that. Yeah, that's part of it. There's another demo that I'm going to show you. But OK, so right now, when this is uh, um, something small, reasonably small, let's make it uh, two newtons. Then at this direction, it provides zero torque. And when it's rotated down this way, for example, now it provides non-zero torque. Yeah. Everyone okay? Yes? Yeah. So, um, so this is the formula for torque. Force times displacement times sine theta. And we'll use this for today and much of tomorrow. We are going to refine this one more time to actually describe what kind of product it here is. The symbol we use for the product here is something called the cross product or it's sometimes called a vector product. Depending on how far you got on ma in math, you might have seen it already. Um, so this is our uh, long introduction to torque. 